Hello everyone, uh, my name is Cameron McDonnell and this is my JAR article presentation. Um, just a forewarning that I will be talking about sexual abuse in this presentation. Um, I don't really go into any details. I do um, say the word sexual abuse a lot and then um, I do briefly talk about mentions of rape very, very briefly. Um, but if that is something that triggers you, please uh, protect yourself um, and yeah. So let's dive right in. This article uh, that I chose is titled Memory for Neutral Emotional and Trauma Related Information in Sexual Abuse Survivors. It was written by Marilyn Forrest and Isabel Blanchett for the European Journal of Psychotraumatology. And the study focuses on non-autobiographical memory, recall, for emotional and traumatic memories in sexual abuse survivors. Um, the participant group was 27 sexual abuse survivors and then 27 women in a control group. Um, the entire group of participants was all women um, who were recruited from the University of Quebec and as well as a sexual assault support group. Um, and they were all about uh, 32 years of age. Um, as far as the exclusionary criteria for the study, there was many things that were chosen for the exclusion criteria because memory can be affected by a lot of things. So they chose particularly ADD, bipolar, any psychotic disorders, history of brain injury or drug and alcohol abuse, completely excluded from the study. Um, the study was done using a free recall of three stories with different emotional content. So the first story was neutral, just about a woman watching TV. The next was an emotional uh, story uh, about a car accident. And then lastly was the trauma related story um, about a woman experiencing sexual abuse. Um, so they were all about the same length with the same narrator. And then they were also randomized across all of the participants. So after each story, um, they were asked to recall as many details as possible with one minute to speak. Uh, then after 30 minutes, they did the recall again uh, with one and a half minutes to, uh, to speak. Um, one thing that I noticed is that I thought that maybe um, having just the auditory story may not have been the best medium to recall the most details. Um, I feel like if it had been a video or even written down and played um, auditory, I feel like the participants may have been able to uh, recall more information. Um, so the conclusion um, and the results were that the hypothesis that the researchers had was correct, which was the sexual abuse survivors had a worse time uh, recalling details from the neutral and the emotional stories. Um, and But they easily recalled the details from the trauma-related story. Um, another interesting correlation that they found was that those who reported a greater, greater number of trauma events um, had an even worse time than people who had less events. So the more trauma that you have, the harder it is to recall things. Um, so one of the main limitations that I noticed when reading the article um, that they also mentioned um, was that the participants were asked to fill out a questionnaire before the study in regards to um, history of trauma. So this could have possibly um, primed some of the participants to know and think about that this study was going to be something trauma related. So when they came to recall the trauma related story, it could have been easier for them to recall because of that. Um, and then they also mentioned something interesting, which is that they did not ask for the time that had elapsed since the abuse. So some of these women could have experienced childhood abuse or um, have it happen in their adulthood. Um, but for the sake of the study, because it was not recorded, we can't really say if one has more correlation than the other. Um, and then there was a few more confounding variable, variables that I thought should be considered. 
Um, one that's very briefly mentioned in the article um, is people who are participating in psychotherapy or maybe other types of therapy that can be used to increase memory. Um, and like I said earlier, there are many, many things that can affect memory recollection, like sleep, medication, stress, emotional state. So I think the study did a great job of picking out the really, really important ones and using that as the exclusion criteria. Um, but yeah, overall, I thought this article was super, super interesting and it really um, confirmed a lot about what we already know about memory, which I thought was super, super cool. So um, thank you guys so much for listening and I am looking forward to hearing your feedback. Bye.